Welcome to another how-to video from Bugspray.com. In this video, I'm going to talk about wood boring pests. This would include things like powder post beetles, what some people call furniture beetles or wood beetles, things that get into wood which are either in the home or structurally part of the home. So for example, a table or a cabinet, maybe you've brought home a piece of furniture or statue from abroad or ordered something online and got the piece of wood. And after you had it for a short while, discovered that there was some type of an insect in there. The clues for determining whether or not there's insect activity can range. Some people call and state that they'll have some holes in wood. Others will report that they're finding small holes, but also a powder coming out, something like a talc powder, or in some cases, sawdust. And if we have something like dry wood termites that are infesting the wood, you'll actually see a hole and then have pellets that are being pushed out of the hole. Before we get into the discussion of how to do the treatments and what treatment options you have, there's a couple of things to understand about all of these situations. The first thing is that oftentimes the wood could have activity for a long period of time without you seeing anything. So for example, you could have a wood floor installed and the wood coming from the factories, coming from the uh, supplier, the distributor, the contractor, Whomever had the planks that were installed, oftentimes will install wood that has some type of a beetle in there, and you can't really tell, you can't see any evidence. And that's because the beetles are inside, and specifically the larvae, which chew and eat the wood, are not out of the wood, they're inside. So the wood is installed, it's finished off, and once those larval stages go into their third stage, what we call the pupa, they become adults. And after that, they emerge. So the holes that you're finding where there's a little powder and maybe uh, a pinhole someplace, very, very small, it's going to be adults that are leaving the wood. Now, drywood termites are going to stay in the wood and the adults actually do feed and they tend to be localized in one area. So you might find them in an attic or in a soffit, maybe down in a crawl space, but they live and do all of their damage in one localized area. As the nest grows, they will expand out, but they're not going to be a random thing that you find all over the home in different locations, in some cases years after the wood is installed. If you have active dry wood termites, you can almost always see activities pretty quickly. If you have something like powder post beetles, it's entirely possible that you might not see anything for several years. There are some species in hardwoods that may not emerge from the wood for 10 years or more. So it's not unusual for you to purchase a piece of furniture and have it sitting for a long period of time before anything ever shows itself. The point is that if a piece of wood in the form of a cabinet or a dresser or cabinets, if all of a sudden it starts to show beetle activity, it could very well have been there for many, many years, and only now are they coming out of the wood. That being said, if you have a wood floor that's installed and you start to find holes coming up through the top of the floor six months or a year or two years after it's been installed, that's very, very common. And one or two holes is not going to be some, something to panic about. But if you have five or ten, you really need to pay attention. And if you're getting ten or twenty over a, a year period or two year period of time, you probably should consider doing some treatment. So we'll get into those treatment options and how you can deal with this and not necessarily just rip away or remove the wood that you're seeing with activity. So when we talk about treating wood, let's first talk about a couple of different kinds of problems that you might have. For example, a piece of furniture something like a cabinet or a night table. These pieces can be very easy to treat or they can be challenging depending on whether or not they have a finish. Hardwood floors, they are typically pretty thin, something in the range of, of what you see here thickness wise. And if you're having holes coming out of the top and it's finished off with a varnish and a stain, 
treatment will have to be done from either the bottom or by drilling holes on the top to get the product inside the wood. If the wood is unfinished, the treatment can be really easy and you have all options available. One thing that's very important to understand, and this is a question we get asked all the time, products like Timbor or this Borathor in a powder form, we always have people wondering, can we just use the Timbor and spray wood or the Borathor powder and spray the wood and solve the problem? And the answer is no. The wettable powders do not penetrate wood. So the activity that's in the wood will continue. You're not getting any penetration or impact on those developing stages. So wettable powders are not applicable for curing a problem. And this is very, very important. You have to use one of the other options that we have, and that's gonna be either an aerosol, a gel, or a liquid. Now, when we talk about treating with a liquid, the Borathor is by far your best option. This is a material that is clear. It's very much like corn syrup and you mix this with water at a one-to-one -one ratio. So this gallon, you would mix with a gallon of water, giving you two gallons of finished product. That would get you coverage-wise anywhere from 500 square feet up to a couple of thousand square feet. If you're treating wood that's about this thick, which is one inch, you could get up to 2,000 square feet of coverage with the mixed two gallons of product that you would have. If you're treating wood that's two inches, say for example, two by fours, you would expect to get something in the range of a thousand square feet treated. The great thing about a product like Borathor is that it's odorless. When you put it on the wood, it gets absorbed by the wood. It will go through the grain of the wood and any insect that tries to eat the wood will die. If you're using this inside a structure, say for example, in sill plate, rafters, floorboards, subflooring, hardwood floors, even furniture that you paint it on or spray it on, once the product soaks in, it's pretty much a permanent fix, meaning that inside the home, a treatment with Borathor would last pretty much forever. If you're using it on a deck outside the house, you probably want to renew that every five to 10 years if you're in a region where the wood boring beetles uh, would be some kind of an ongoing problem. Now, many times we have uh, surfaces that are not able to accept the Borathor. The way that you can find out is very simple. Borathor is water-based, it mixes with water. And if you wanna test the wood ahead of time to see if you'll be able to treat it, just wet it down with water. See what the wood does. There are many natural type oils and stains, uh, sometimes just wood treatments that have wax in them all of which can prevent Borathor from being absorbed. But if you put water on the piece and see what the water does, it will tell you a lot. If the water gets absorbed by the wood, so too will the Borathor and you'll be able to use it. If the wood rejects water and you can't get water to go into the wood, Borathor will not be an option. In other words, you can't treat with Borathor. Even if you sand the wood down, many times the wax and some of that lacquer can get so far down, it can be hard to remove. That being said, a light coat can certainly be sandpapered off and then the flooring treated, for example. Or on furniture, it's not unusual for you to have an untreated side. So if this was a table and the table is varnished on top, but if you flip it upside down and you find that it's untreated on the bottom, this is a great place to treat. The penetration of Borathor will be two to four inches. So treating just one side can get you penetration several inches in one direction, and you don't have to have access to both sides to do the treatment. So even if the wood has a finish on it, you don't have to rule it out if you have access to sides which are untreated. But in many cases, we have customers who call and they'll have a statue, for example, that is finished all the way around. It could be something as small as this piece of wood maybe a foot tall, four to six inches wide, and it has a stain in it, it has some kind of a, a, a finish, and, and you don't want to ruin any of that. The piece might be round, it might be something of wood stock that was about this big. Well, if that's true, what you can do is on the bottom, you can drill holes into it, and then inject either of these two products 
to get penetration into the wood. So when we talk about treating wood floors, for example, you don't have to go through the top by removing all of the uh, finish that's on there. If you have a finish and you can't treat with Borothor, you can conceivably drill holes through the top or from the bottom, if you have access, say for example, from a basement or a crawl space, you could drill up through the subflooring into the hardwood floor and inject the aerosol and get coverage that way. If you have cabinets on a wall, for example, and you see beetles coming out of the exterior siding of the cabinets, inside the cabinets, if they're unfinished, you could treat with the Borothor, or you could drill some holes and treat from inside and get the wood properly protected. Now, when we talk about drilling holes and these two products, one is a gel and one is an aerosol. There's a huge difference in how both of these are used. The gel is applied with a caulking gun and it's very gooey like silicon, and you will need a hole at least three eighths of an inch thick. It's hard to see how big that is, but you can see compared to my pinky that it's a relatively big hole. And larger holes will allow you to get more product in there. So if you're drilling using a hole like this, you're gonna to wanna to drill your holes about every four inches apart. So you're looking at three to four holes per 12 inches of wood. Once you've had your holes created, you then inject the gel to get the product inside the wood, and then you'll cap off the holes so that the product stays in there and it permeates over time throughout the wood grain. It's the same type of inactive as the Borothor, and it will get you coverage laterally so that you can get pieces of wood treated with properly placed holes. When we talk about aerosol treating, this is by far the most discreet and probably the fastest route of solving any problem, and that's because the aerosol is highly aggressive, it kills all stages, it permeates and percolates through the wood because of the solvent system, and it requires a very small drill bit to have access to the wood. So here we're looking at a 7 64ths of an inch. You can see that it's very, very tiny. You can get these drill bits in very long lengths, so this is a short one, but you can get them in 12 inch lengths and up to 24 inches that I've seen, possibly even uh, longer. The point is that with a really long drill bit like this, you could conceivably treat from one end and drill your hole all the way to the other edge. And then using this straw, you can inject the product this way and get really good coverage because it's an aerosol it's going to propel out and the aerosol grants you a lot of leeway with being able to treat pieces that you don't want to drill big holes into or pieces that have very limited areas where you can drill a hole and that's because again the drill bit required is much smaller so for small ornate pieces of furniture uh, something like a small night table, or if you had a fancy statue, something that you brought home again from traveling, something that you ordered online, and you discovered that it's got an insect issue, it does not mean that you have to discard the piece. Using a small drill bit and some of the aerosol, you can get that piece treated. If you've got cabinets that are mounted on a wall, and the outside of the cabinets and the inside of the cabinets are all painted and sealed and it's just too much work to remove those finishes, you can once again do the treatment, the FSMP, and inject those holes and get really good coverage. Let me point out that when I talk about this aerosol, the uniqueness of this is the petroleum base and the ability to penetrate, like kind of like WD-40. Virtually all aerosols today are water-based and they will not work in that scenario. So you wanna use something that's super aggressive and the rate that this product covers is about two inches in all directions from any one hole. So what that means is that if we're drilling a hole here, we're gonna get two inches in that direction, we're gonna get two inches in this direction. The can says you can space your holes out eight to 10 inches and be fine. We're more comfortable with that four to six inch range. So try to space your holes every four inches and you'll definitely be good. If you have to, for some reason, expand or make those holes spaced out six to eight inches. That's fine. Again, that's according to the label. 
so you should be protected. But every four inches grants you complete protection. And therefore, if there's anything in there, any eggs that are hidden, they're going to get killed. Any pupa that are in there, you're going to be able to kill them. And so one thing that the aerosol does over the gel and the borothor, meaning that it can kill all stages, the ejecta gel and the borothor, they will only kill what eats them. So once the wood is treated, any larvae which try to feed will die, but the process will take a while because the eggs have to hatch and you have to wait for them to feed till they die off. And this product will not kill the pupa. So if you're only using these products in a piece of wood, you're going to find that adults can be emerging for many months, if not a year or two after you've done your treatment. Conversely, if you've done your application with the FSMP, you can conceivably knock out the entire active population in one full swoop. It's kind of like fumigation. So you're killing all stages, therefore you won't have new holes being created. You can use old holes to do your treatment in addition to drilling holes. And it's just a very quick process. The only drawback to the aerosol is that it does have a slight odor. That odor will dissipate and go away after a few days. But when you properly treat and saturate that wood, it will have a slight odor for a few days until it all dries and cures. And let me point out, this video is not species specific for wood boring beetles. In other words, right now we are experiencing and finding all different species of wood boring beetles, probably because the wood is coming from all over the, the world these days that are being used for furniture and in home construction but also because over the years we've had so many new species introduced. In all cases, it doesn't matter. If you've got a piece of wood that's infested, whether the beetle is targeting a softwood or a hardwood, these applications work and the process is exactly the same. So there's nothing different regardless of the species. The only thing or decision that you have to make is which of these options is gonna be best for your needs. Are you gonna be able to have complete access to the wood so that you can apply the borothor with a pump sprayer or a paintbrush or uh, some type of a fogging machine and get uniform coverage because the wood is all unfinished. And if it's not and you have to drill holes, then will you inject the holes with something like this gel, which is again like very much like silicon and requires large holes or are you in such a situation that you don't want to make large holes? So the aerosol and quick fix of the FSMP with its solvent system is the way to go using the real tiny drill and a lot of holes to get you the coverage that you need. If you have more questions, send us an email, support at bugspray.com. It'll be fast to answer. And below this video, you'll see all the links to these products so that you can place your order so thank you for watching this how-to video from bugspray.com.